Hello and welcome back to Boxing Social. In association with Betfred, my name is Eamon Khan. I'm here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, with the one and only Adam Smith. We've just witnessed the weigh-in and face-off for Usyk anti Joshua too. Adam, your reaction? I thought they looked fantastic. Um, I'm sure you did as well. Impeccable shape, wonderful condition. The pair of them have worked so hard for this under different circumstances. Now let's look back to Tottenham. AJ was uh, defeated and defeated you know, badly for him. He was... He was very upset about his performance. I know he was. Uh, he wanted to get Usyk back as quick as he could, and, and massive credit to AJ. Did it with Andy Ruiz straight back into the fire. You know, no warm-up fight. Just he just wants to try and exact revenge, test himself against the very best. But he's very flat after that. And Alexander, of course, it was the the night of his his career as a, as a heavyweight. He'd had great nights as a as a cruiserweight in the in the World Super Series. Of course, as an amateur, both striking gold in London 2012. But I think that was the the night for him where he proved himself in the heavyweight division. And of course, Alexander wants to become undisputed, just like AJ has always tried to become too. And the elusive fight with Tyson Fury has. Uh, uh, has, has not been made and obviously the winner will want to tempt Tyson out of this uh, in quotes retirement and uh, get that on and find out who is the undisputed so both know what's on the line Alexander has had the strangest of last few months the hardest of last few months with the terrible situation in the Ukraine I mean I'm hearing all the stories and I spent a lot of time with Alex and Egas you know, learning about what, what he actually did to get home and how he was on the front line and what he's done now for the Ukrainians by giving them the, 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 the rights. They can all watch it on free television there and all of the stuff that he does to represent. He's got the USIC Foundation. Um, it's fantastic. He's going straight back after the fight to, to see the soldiers and I believe some are even coming here. So look, it's, it's amazing that he's even fighting Alexander. Um, he's had his camp in Dubai. You know, he'll, he'll, have, he'll have compartmentalized, he'll have boxed it off. He knows he's got a job to do and he's got a nation you know, who, who need him. He need figureheads like Alexander. And for AJ, he's had a, you know, a mission to sort of you know, reinvent what he's going to do in the rematch. He, he was obviously confused at which style to go in with last time. He's left the general, he's left the captain, Robert McCracken. You know, first fight without Robert. A lot of people are looking at Robert Garcia and Angel Fernandez and what tactics they're going to come up with. Not, not people are looking at what will happen without Robert McCracken in the corner, who he had all the way through. You know, let's let's that, that's a big that's a big thing. But he needed a change. He's gone to Garcia, who's a fantastic, was a great fighter, by the way, mind you. I remember him fighting, um, you know, the likes of Diego Corrales, having great wars. He was a terrific fighter himself. Wonderful trainer, um, you know, trained some great names, and uh, and it, you know, he's an aggressive, aggressive mind, mindset. And I think you know, him and Angel will have worked out the, the the plan, and and AJ will know what he's got to go and do. The big question is, can he implement it? Can he implement it against a guy of Alexander's class? Um, will it be round 13 for Alexander that he had him almost out of there at the end of the 12th? Will he go in really aggressively uh, and try and try and you know Im implement himself very early and hurt Joshua early, or will um, you know will he be more elusive? Will AJ get hold of the middle of the ring? Will he try and back him up? Will he be able to throw those combinations? I think he needs to go to the body. There's a lot of things AJ needs to do and to implement. It's easy saying that and doing it sparring, but he's got to do it on the night. So for all the people who I think are leaning more towards Joshua this week, that seems to be the vibe. Usyk a, a favourite, obviously, and the first time he'll come in as an underdog. The vibe I get here is that people are leaning towards Joshua. They think he's in a great place, but he's got to go and do it in the ring. And also Usyk, he's done it once, but now can he do it all over again? You know, there's, there's a different mentality. Will he do it the same way? Will he try something different? Um, it's, it, it's often repeat in a rematch, but it can be very different. We saw that with Bo Holyfield. Holyfield's here, three very different fights. So you never know. Barrera Morales, you know, one apiece and then, so you don't know. Um, but Usyk starts the rightful favourite, no question about that. Does it mean Joshua can't win the fight? Absolutely not. He could knock Usyk out. You know, he's, he's a much bigger man. He's got the size and the power. Usyk's got the skills. It's a, it's a, it's a great one.
Adam, a lot is made when it comes to Joshua weigh-ins about his weight uh, in between fights. There was a lot of talk also about Usyk saying he might be a bit bigger. Usyk uh, weighed in about similar weight as to last time. And to Joshua, can't quite work out the kilos in my head from the last time round. But <laughs> the weights, um, what do you make we of the two? We had the charts out, trying to sort Did of you? work it all out. Yeah, but I, I had a, a little tip off earlier uh, from inside team Usyk that he was going to come in at 100 kilograms, uh, which surprised me because I thought he'd put on a bit of weight. But I think they've, they've worked on the strength, not the weight necessarily. And um, for AJ, I think he's coming bang on. I mean, he's a little bit heavier than he was at Tottenham, 17, six ish. So four pounds heavier, that's nothing. He's 17 and a half stone heavyweight, whether he's slightly lighter or I think he was, he was under 17 for Andy Ruiz, which I thought was a bit light for him. I think his peak weight is between 17, three and, and 17, six, seven. So he's around about there. Um, maybe they put a little bit more on for, for the added power, um, but it's negligible. I mean, they're, they're both pretty much exactly the same as they were in, in London. And it's going to come down to, you know, who gets it right on the night. Um, there's no question in my eyes, that Alexander Rusik is a more natural, beautiful, better boxer, but AJ has power, and if he can finish you, he's a predatory finisher, and he's got combinations, and in heavyweight boxing, it takes one punch, a couple of punches, suddenly things are very different, so, uh, and he starts fresh, AJ, he doesn't start in round 13, this is what I mean about the round one, round 13 thing, Alexander Rusik nearly had him beaten up and out of there, in the, in the end, he least stopped him at the end of round 12, so his mindset will be, it's round 13, I'm going to carry on. Whereas for AJ, he's fresh again. This is all new now. He goes in and he's got to do it all differently. Does he, does he do it recklessly? In my opinion, he can't. He's got to do it calculating. Does he get hurt early and go back and think, oh, do I box him or do I, do I you know, let myself in again? It's, it's just got everything. Both have got very good uppercuts as well. So watch those early exchanges. And I, I just, I wonder if we'll have, I'm not saying a shootout, but I think it'll be very different to the first fight. I think there's, there's going to be, I think there's going to be a stoppage in this, and who knows? Maybe both will go down. Adam, uh, you've seen boxers, superstars come and go in, in your time as a seat at Sky Sports. Uh, what do you make of kind of some of the public maybe potentially writing off anti Joshua? I suppose boxing is a "what have you done for me lately" type of sport. What do you make of that kind of thing of a pulse thought? As in writing him off as a fighter, or? In his, in his chances. I, I mean, I think AJ was the darling of the nation for so long and, and Tyson Fury when he came back and almost did the impossible, didn't he, against Wilder three times. I think um, yeah, there's, there's a great deal of, of, of support for Tyson. They're very different characters. I think what Anthony's done for the sport and everybody at Sky is testament to that because we've worked with him for so long um, and shown every one of his fights. He's been absolutely brilliant. He's been the ideal role model. He's a lovely guy. He's a competitor. And uh, he's a very, very, very good heavyweight. You know, he's a two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Um, you know, is he as good as Tyson Fury? We don't know. They're not four. Is he as good as Deontay Wilder? We don't know. He's not four. Is he as good as Alexander Usyk? Well, on last time's performance, no. Let's see what he's, he's like again. I think it's wrong to write him off. Um, I think we've seen him come back against Andy Ruiz. Is this a harder comeback? Yes, it's a harder fight than the Ruiz rematch. And he didn't turn up in great shape. And uh, Alexander Usyk is a, you know, a consummate professional and is a, is a beast. He's a pound for pound best. So it's a much harder ask for AJ this time. But no, I don't think people should be writing off his chances. Um, could Alexander Usyk win spectacularly? I think maybe he could because AJ is going to take the high risks and coming on to him could come on to, to trouble himself. But could AJ win spectacularly? Yes. As a heavyweight, we know he can. Um, there's going to be drama. Um, and I think that, as I said, I think Usyk starts a, a, a favourite. But a lot of people, a lot of good people, good knowledgeable connoisseurs around this fight have, uh, have, been, have been very impressed with AJ. So um, I'm not sure maybe the fans are going off what they just see in the ring rather than what they know outside of it. Um, but I hope they'll get, they'll get behind AJ. He's a British boxing icon and he's a legend of our sport and selling out stadiums. He's been absolutely brilliant. Whatever happens tomorrow night, he's been absolutely fantastic. And uh, we should be right behind AJ as, 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 as a, you know, a British broadcaster. And we should be right behind Alexander Rusik um, in, in global terms because he's been fantastic. We've had a number of Alexander's fights. They feel like family, both of them, you know, both teams do. And um, you know, we're very excited and uh, it's a pleasure being here and we're glad we have the rights and uh, we hope there's a, a terrific event and I'm sure there will be here uh, tomorrow night and I shall hope everyone at Sky, all the customers enjoy it um, because you're watching two great athletes. I mean, look, look back 10 years ago, 10 years, a decade, since both of them struck gold in London 2012. This is the elite. AJ is the elite. So is Alexander Rusik. And uh, yeah, people should get off his back a bit, I think.
Can I get your response to Johnny Nelson saying that maybe if Anthony Joshua did lose, that he might walk away from the sport? Can I get your response to that? Um, I've got a slightly different response. I mean, the, the, there's could, should, possibly would, will he? I, I don't know. I wasn't there for the interview. I've heard all the kerfuffle. I've heard what Eddie said. I've watched it from afar. Um, it's the fun of the fair of fight week, isn't it? You know, Johnny says some fantastic comments. Johnny gets a lot of things right. He's a brilliant pundit. He's a great guy. He's a wonderful colleague to us. But, you know, he also called Alexander an average southpaw, and he, uh, he said he was 1,000% convinced AJ would beat Ruiz. I said it can only be 100%, but, you know, but Johnny's, Johnny's fun, and he's great, and he'll say what he means, and he's had a pop at me saying that, you know, that, he, uh, that I think Usyk would have beaten him. Of course, it's, it's, everyone's got opinions. I think the most important thing is that um, we're here for AJ and we're here for Usyk. Um, that's what it is. Um, let's see what happens tomorrow night. I personally think that AJ... Um, could fight on for you know a number of fights in years. That's what he's always wanted to do. I think people look at the money he's he's he's, a, he's amassed, and if he was to lose badly tomorrow night, maybe he'd rethink. But I think, from what I know of AJ, I think he'll carry on, and it's not us to tell anyone to retire. It's uh, up to fighters themselves. And uh, I think AJ has lots of fights out there for him if he loses tomorrow night. But if he loses, you know, by knockout or something, maybe he will take time out to rethink a bit. But I could see him coming back against Wall. I could still see the Fury fight happening at some point, whatever. It's always there. Uh, and there's lots of other great heavyweights. Your Joe Parkers, your Joe Joyce's, your you know, Daniel Dubois has done so well lately. So there's lots. I'm not sure AJ will want to go on too long. Uh, outstay is welcome, but I think that he loves competition. And I, I see now, I'm very close to KD and his team, and I see nothing there that tells me he wants to call it a day. But maybe Johnny's saying you know, he could do, and that's a possibility. Of course it's a possibility. He could win and become a three-time heavyweight champion and say, see you later. It's not for us. We're here because of the fighters. We're, we're lucky enough to watch, call them, commentate, report on them. They're the brave guys that get in the ring. If they suddenly say no more, who are we to say they shouldn't do or do that? You know, they'll be judged in boxing history, but they've got families and they've got their life ahead of them. It's a short window. It's a short career. Um, and we probably what we don't like seeing is fighters retiring and then coming back and then not looking as good. I like to see fighters who, who go the whole way through, like Joe Calzaghe did, like Carl Froch did, like Lennox Lewis. Call it a day. Nassim Hammer did eventually. I thought he'd gone a bit longer. They call it a day and they don't come back. And I think that's good. I think um, every fighter gets an itch. Carl Froch got an itch the night of Brook and Golovkin. He's like, right, I'm going to take out Gennady. I'm like, sit down, shut up. You know, Johnny as well. You know, don't, don't, they, they're retired as champions. You know, Johnny had the chance of fighting Enzo Macronelli. He said, I'd, I'd have bit knocked him, I'd have beaten Enzo Macronelli easy with my hands behind, the time, behind my back. I said, Johnny, you had hip operations, knee operations. You know, you're an artificial boy by that point. I don't think you would have beaten Enzo because Enzo was a fit, strong, tough guy who could punch. So look, there's, there's timing. Boxing's about levels and timing. And I think that you, know, you go out at the right time. I don't, I don't see that with AJ at the moment. I don't, certainly don't see that with Alexander Usyk. And I don't actually see that with Tyson Fury. So I don't think anyone's ready to retire. And as we see with Deontay Wilder, everyone's still up and running. The heavyweight division is, uh, is, is on fire. So let's just enjoy tomorrow night and see what happens beyond. But uh, yeah, Johnny will say what he says. Eddie will say what he says. Eddie will have a pop at us. You know, are you favoring Usyk, not Joshua now that AJ's with design? Rubbish, absolute rubbish. I don't know what others, I can speak for myself. All I know is I'm very close to AJ, very close to his team, very close to Alexander Usyk and his team, and always will be. They're a pleasure to work with. They've been absolutely fantastic for the sport and may the best man win tomorrow night. Last one in this fight, Adam, can you just make mention um, a lot of promoters, a lot of broadcasters putting on pay-per-views, uh, no doubt that this is a pay-per-view uh, level fight. Um, uh, but how well do you anticipate it will do uh, being like because of the climate right now? Well, the climate is that there's a lot of um, box office fights or pay-per-view fights. You know, we know DAZN are in the market, BT as well. And you know, that means that it's congested and obviously fans have got to make choices. So uh, it also means boxing's hot because big fights cost big money. So ultimately, we've had a lot of great fights on Sky Sports this year, the likes of, you know, the the, the Eubank Williams fight, Taylor Cattrall. We've got a phenomenal September the 10th coming on with the women, with Clarissa and Savannah. Cannot wait for that night. That's on Sky Sports. As you rightly said, there's some fights that have to be on pay-per-view on box office. This is one of those. This is a very, very expensive fight. You know, the fighters are getting huge money, as they deserve. So sometimes we've got to do that. It also means that we, we work 24-7 in, in, in polishing our arsenal and trying to provide the best build-up and the best fight event that we can. We believe we do that better than anyone on Sky Sports Box Office. Um, look, it's August the 20th. 
it's the middle of the summer or, or certainly people are still on a holiday. Uh, we had a pay-per-view with McGregor and Mayweather, which I think was the week later, uh, which, was, um, which was very big, uh, did great numbers. Uh, but that was cross-code and a different sort of event. Um, we did very well with Pacquiao and, uh, and Mayweather, and we had a very short promotional time, which we've had this time. It's been a very small window. I would talk about the boxers' fight, fighting careers, small windows. You had a very small window to publicize it this time that's on Sky. But uh, yeah, I think people now know, and I think it's a fight that people won't want to miss. And I think once you've sort of tuned in on Saturday to, to uh, Soccer Saturday and the football and all that, and you, you get reminded that what's coming up later, I think people will tune in. So I'm expecting it to do well, yeah. A few questions away from this card then. Uh, whispers that Taylor Catterall 2 will land on pay-per-view. What can you tell us about that, Adam? Nothing's decided at the moment. Um, this is the box office event that we're working on now. We're then all systems go once this is done to September the 10th. Nice holiday time for me at the moment, by the way. I've come off holiday to do Bournemouth and then to do this. So uh, I'm not sure the family are too happy, but this is a big boxing time. It's fantastic. And people have come around the world for this fight. And I think people will come around the world for September the 10th. Um, beyond that, we, uh, we have lots of discussions. Obviously, Jack Catchell's become a, a fighter for Boxer and Sky, which is, is brilliant. And top rank have Josh Taylor. So I'm sure it will be a fight that we can put together pretty, uh, pretty easily. And um, yeah, we'll see where that lands and when it lands. And, uh, but it's a compelling rematch. It's a fantastic story. And I think when there's big stories, there's big interest. So uh, let's see what happens with that. And uh, there'll be lots of other fights on Sky Sports or on Box Office, I'm sure, in the in the coming months, but, um, but nothing on the horizon just yet. Have you seen your good friend Prince Nassim yet? Do you know what? I haven't seen Naz. Um, I messaged him and I haven't heard back, so uh, I'm disappointed. Where is Naz? I, I heard he was here the other day. I saw pictures with uh, the Smith family. They all met up with him, which was great. So uh, I'll, uh, I'd like to smoke out Naz and uh, catch up with him. We always have, uh, you know, have a lot of affection for each other. We were um, very, very close as as interviewer and fighter for many years and uh, there was no one like Naz. He was uh, a one-off. Um, there have been a lot of one-offs, but he was certainly a one-off. And yeah, I, I loved every minute of working with, well, I love every minute. I'm not sure I like waiting around for him for hours and hours, but I loved every, every minute of interviewing him. And uh, yeah, there's a special bond there. And um, yeah, I love to, uh, he had his ups and downs, but there'll be a, a big place in my heart always for Nassim Hamad, and uh, I look forward to seeing him. And if it's not until fight night, then it will be, uh, he'll be fine. And no doubt I'll be climbing all over his own ringside, trying to get his best seats and whatever, and doing what Naz does or calling me up in the morning. Normally he calls me up in the morning and says, can you get me X amount of tickets? But Naz is like, I'm not busy enough. You know, I think he'll have plenty of, plenty of support here. I'm sure he'll have his, uh, his ringside seat. And I'm, I think his family are here. I'm not sure I've heard his sons are around. So I look forward to seeing them all, but haven't yet. So grab your thoughts on Eubank, uh, Ben, legacy yeah. point. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm disappointed that obviously I'd like to have seen that on Sky. And I think it was a fight maybe for down the line uh, that we could have built brilliantly on box office. But um, as a fight, it's, a, it's, it's one of, of, of genuine interest, isn't it? It's compelling. It's a, it's a casuals fight. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's two big names. And uh, yeah, I, I can't wait for the fight and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, unfortunately, it's not one we're involved in like that. But um, I've spoken to Chris and I've reached out to Connor. I've talked to Eddie about it and it's, um, it's a fight. And Nissa and Callow, obviously, it's a fight that um, I want to be at as a fight fan. And, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's great. I've worked with both Connor and Chris and, um, you know, they're, they're going to make a lot of money from this. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fight you've got to favour Chris with on paper because of the weight and the experience. But Connor's an animal and <laughs> Connor doesn't care about that. And he'll be giving it absolutely everything to... Uh, to try and uh, to try and change that it could be a shootout. It's a good fight. Let's not hide behind it. It's a it's an exciting fight. Um, but look, we've got our own business to take care of. Liam Smith's back uh, on September the third. I really wanted to see the Liam Smith Eubank fight. Maybe that will happen afterwards. Um, it's been great having Chris on Sky. I'd love to see him back. And obviously Connor's with Matchroom, so he's uh, he's on the other side. But I have enormous respect for Connor Ben. I think he's a fantastic. Uh, a fighter, a great man, a great person, and um, yeah, I like them both, and I can't wait for the fight. I'm going to leave the final word with you. Why should people tune in on a Saturday night? I think it's just the most compelling rematch of recent times. It's a fabulous event. It's the biggest fight of the year. It's the heavyweight division. It's got the WBA Super, the WB. Let's not get this right. The WBA Super, the IBF, the IBO, the WB. We get confused here, WBO. WBC is Tyson's for now. The WBA Super. WBA is with Dan Lodabar. Too many belts to remember, guys. Uh, the IBF, the WBO, I've done too many interviews. The uh, Ring Magazine is also on the line. Forget all of those. 
It's a great, great fight. It's a fantastic story. It's a great narrative. Can AJ come back, exact revenge, become a three-time heavyweight champion, get that Tyson Fury fight? Or will Alexander Usyk prove himself pound for pound, king even, pound for pound, one of the best already, cleaned up at cruiserweight? He's almost cleaning up at heavyweight. If he wins tomorrow night, it's one more belt. That's the Tyson Fury WBC belt to become undisputed. Fantastic. You've got Evander Holyfield, Roberto Duran, Nassim Hamad all around us here. But tune into box office. You've watched all AJ's fights so far. This is not one to miss. This is the biggest night of AJ's boxing career. Nine years, professional years in. Ten years after he struck gold in London 2012. And every fight is the biggest professional fight for Alexander Usyk. And because he's carrying the nation of Ukraine on his shoulders, he is the one of the role models. You know, talking to his president, allowed to come and fight. Vitaly, the mayor of Kiev, you know, everything that's going on there. Our hearts going out there. The Usyk Foundation, the love of the Ukraine. With that as well, it just adds so much. People have to tune into this fight. You won't want to miss it. So Sky Sports Box Office is the place to be. And I promise you, we'll be putting everything, all the stardust on, the razzle-dazzle, everything we can, hopefully we have in the build-up. And we will again Saturday night. And as I say, let's hope the fighters come out safe and sound. May the best man win because they're both great men.